Thanks for staying with us now. Having separate accounts for designated purposes is essential for a successful personal finance journey. Now, that's one of many financial nuggets Tammy always shares with her online family. Now, many people know this principle, but how many people truly practice the principle of planned spending? Now, if we were to do a quick survey, quickly, between myself and uh, what's it called, who, uh, who spent, did you spend what you planned? No. I spent more. <laughs> <laughs> so I if spent we, more. If we, if we did that quick survey on what we, whether you planned your sh Christmas shopping, did you, did you spend what you planned? I spent much uh -huh. more than I bargained see, for. You honestly. See it now. So this is the problem. So that's why we're talking about. This. Cost of living. And for is those high. that are watching, tell us if you spent, you know, much more than you planned, you know, to shop to, for your shopping this Christmas. Now let us hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join this conversation. Tweet at us at WayShowAfrica1 with the hashtag WayShow, or send us an SMS or WhatsApp to zero eight one eight zero three eight four six six three. So you spent more, Abby. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. did, did you spend below what you're bargaining for? <laughs> <laughs> Let me not just my own. And besides that, the cost See, of living, really heavy. when you go to the market these days, things are so expensive. Mm. And it's not anybody's fault because inflation, I'm not a, a financial expert, but inflation is high, like mm -hmm. everybody says. <laughs> I, it's not. It's no one's fault. Mm. You imagine a bottle of water, 100 naira, what used to be 50 naira. I was shocked. Okay. Tell me, you I'm not going to answer that question. <laughs> Tammy Abasaya is a chartered financial analyst and a personal finance expert with over a decade of work experience spanning across different markets um, around sub-Saharan Africa. She teaches financial literacy, profits investment solutions, and she is a co-anchor on Waze. We are proud to say that. And she's joined us live in studio, looking all glam. And looking so beautiful. Hi, ladies. Hi. It's, it's Hi. interesting that you are our guest. You today. know, I was liking the intro and everything. I'm like, okay. Is that me? <laughs> because this is you. home, right? Like, yeah. I'm so at home on the table. So I'm like, okay, I'm the guest. Yes. I better milk this. Yes, so. oh, yes you sure do. How you but you know, Tammy, it's so interesting that, you know, when I was going to have this conversation, given that today is um, just barely two days to Christmas, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I know for a fact that. That fever between today and tomorrow. Oh God, Everybody absolutely. wants to get something. You know, there's just something around Christmas that no matter what, even with COVID, we mm -hmm. still are saying that a lot of people are going all out to say, you know what, let me just go for this, let me do that, and, and yes, all of it's that. It's been an interesting year. Yeah. So we're still alive. So we are yeah. celebrating. So, uh, hey, now the excuse <laughs> is that the fact that I'm alive, that would be alive then. <laughs> We survived I said that deliberately, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you said that deliberately. So a lot of people are actually doing this. And, mm -hmm. you know, and I'm just wondering, wondering what the, where would be the starting point in terms of, you know what, if we want to look at lessons learned, first of all, mm -hmm. from 2020 and how it's so important for us to have a very disciplined, um, what's it called, structure when it comes to personal finance. Mm -hmm. You know, where do we even start from first? Let me even start <laughs> So absolutely, it's planning. Um, so when it comes to seasonal festivities and celebrations and all of that, what's most imperative, right, when it comes to your personal finances, to understand that it's the time for you to, you should know to control your spending. So around the festivals and, you know, all the fun around Christmas or Ileya or Diwali and all, it's not the time to say, oh, I want to start budgeting. I want to start investing. Uh-uh, you know. It's just another consideration for your overall personal finance journey, mm -hmm. right? So we knew we were going to have debt in December, in December, mm -hmm. but we knew Absolutely. since January. Mm -hmm. So we should have started planning, mm -hmm. right? That's the way to look at it, to say, look, it's not a fire brigade approach to mm -hmm. say, when Christmas is coming is when I need to start shopping mm -hmm. or I need to start saving or investing. No, you should be very, the kind of, I keep telling people, the kind of intentionality that you give to your career that you give to your relationships, that's what you need to give to your money. It's not something that you can outsource. You know, your financial future is not something that you should let happen. You shouldn't let it happen. You should make it happen. You have to be wow. intentional, mm. you know, about it. But Timmy, I wanted to ask you, mm -hmm. what do you think is the common problem? Is it that we have, we lack financial literacy, the majority of us? 
Is that the biggest problem for our personal finance and it's why we're struggling problem. all the time? Mm -hmm. It's big. So all over the world, right, you'll find that people um, need to learn better money habits. You know, mm. it differs from, you know, location to location. But in Nigeria particularly, you're right, the financial literacy numbers, um, they don't look too good. And it's an extension of our formal education numbers. So in Nigeria today, it's very possible, depending on your discipline, right, you can finish school from primary to secondary to university without knowing the difference between assets and liabilities. Mm -hmm. Like, it depends. You can study. I did cell biology and genetics for my first degree, and I didn't need to learn. I, at no point did anybody teach me, this is an asset, this is a liability, this is how you calculate your net worth, this is how interest rate works. If you take, if you go into debt, this is how it happens. You can actually live your life without knowing. Mm -hmm. And so you don't learn to plan. You don't know what retirement planning is. You know, you just know that I'm making money and I'm spending it. You don't know to invest. Mm. So it's a big problem. It's society. I like the fact that you said something about formal education. Mm -hmm. And it's so important that in our education sector, we are not aware of things like this. Mm -hmm. And most of us get to find out the hard way when we are indebted. Oh, when life happens. Exactly. Absolutely. So when, when is the right time for you to introduce children to financial literacy? Very early. I say it all the time. Financial parenting. You know, I'm very um, grateful to my dad. God, you know, rest his soul. Mm -hmm. From the time I was five years old, he started playing Monopoly with me. Wow. You'd be amazed. Interesting, fun game, board game, right? Mm -hmm. And so I started to learn the concept of having money. And then I knew that I could ex exchange it for assets. So I would buy a title deed. I'll buy a land. I knew that exactly. if I made more money, I'll buy a house or convert it to a hotel. I started to understand, oh, assets and liabilities. Okay, I'm owing you. Mm -hmm. You know, and then we were playing in a group of more than two or three. You know, it would talk to me and say, you know what, don't sell this. So I started to understand partnerships and negotiations mm -hmm. and all of those things. And by the time I was six years old, I could hold my own on the board. Like I was beating teenagers, you know, on the board and all of that. So I knew the concept of saving. The concept of investing, perhaps not a lot. So whilst I was in the university, you know, I was working on this, and I'm going to talk about this. Mm -hmm. There's something I tell people about my four C's of financial success. We'll get to that. You know, but you have to constantly be creative about earning money. You can't just sit down and say, oh, I'm, this is my day job, and that's it. You have to be creative, right? So I was in school, but I was doing photography modeling. I was making money on the side. But all I did was save it. I just had a fixed deposit account, period. You know, so I left school knowing what I know now, and I'm like, oh my goodness, if I had known, if I had started investing then, maybe in the equity market or something, do you know what I'll have by now? Mm, exactly. So the best time to invest was then, right? Absolutely. The next best time is now. Shame me. Don't mm. sleep on it. Shame me. <laughs> you see, you just say, you, you, you hit a, you, you struck a chord <laughs> inside of me. Let me tell you, the chord is struck. That's how me and my sister were in the university. They were telling us, buy shares, buy shares. That's how we carry our hard-earned money. I can't forget. <laughs> you just I bought, to buy blindly. She bought a thousand <laughs> shares. I think I bought a thousand shares. We're in the university. We're like in maybe 200 level or something. All state trust bank. You. You can oh. see where you know. You know? even naming and shaming. Oh, oh my I God. I don't have to name them. Or I have to name them because... No, I don't even know where the bank is. Yeah. Whether they, because at some point they said whether it was uh, which bank that uh, took them, bought them over and all mm. of that. You know what? So we invested. Financial education. Hey, hey, not, wait, not, I'm coming somewhere. <laughs> you know, so because, I said you hit a cord. The okay. cord is still paying me. <laughs> you know? So by the time I, by the time I mm. bought those shares, I was so excited. Was it 1,000 or 4,000 units? I think it was 4,000 units. That's a lot of units. Yes, we bought 4,000 units because it was quite cheap and we had saved our, our school money. You know, me in school, I didn't used to spend my money. I used to save my money. Money you should Until have Until I met boyfriend. <laughs> boyfriend, I will now... You know, any, you know, it's so interesting that any time my sister sees me going to the bank to withdraw money, they knew that my husband was coming that weekend. Because anytime he was coming, I would always make a bowl of uh, something soup nice for him <laughs> that he would take back to the fridge. So anytime I made that, anytime I go to withdraw money, they knew he was coming because I was very prudent saving my money. Mm -hmm. So I bought those shares. And at the time I bought the shares and everything, I was excited. You know, I'm a shareholder. I also bought some uh, as well with Oando and all of that. But it didn't just go well with me. And because of that, if you mention share near my ear, <laughs> like I just don't want to hear it. And I know that there are a lot of people like me. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? Absolutely. So, um, should we, because, I mean, we, we had um, an amazing guest on Monday. Mm -hmm. She was talking about shares. 
And she said that, in fact, now is even the best time to actually buy shares, even with all of these things, because when they bounce back, they bounce back well. Better. You know, but I'm still, I'm still a bit skeptical about, you know what, where do I even start? If I say, okay, now I want to start being financially, um, what's it called, free, mm -hmm. my personal finance, I want to take it seriously and all of that. Mm -hmm. So for all the loose change that I have, where do I even start to put this money? Where do I take it to? You know, what do I do with it? So you need to um, invest in yourself. So I tell people, look, you can outsource some of those things. That's my day job, right? You know, there are rich people who just have money and say, okay, I want to get a financial manager and do it for me. I get it. It's a thing. But you should understand the basics. And I tell people, you can call me and say, oh, Timmy, um, I, I need investment advice. I have money. What should I buy? It doesn't work like that. If I give you advice now, that advice is good till the end of the conversation. Because mm. guess what? The market can move in two hours. Mm. So you yourself should invest in these little things like understanding simple basics of saving, investing, you know, budgeting, retirement planning. How much do I earn monthly? Mm. How much goes into my transactional account? How much am I saving? Because every one of us should have emergency funds. Mm. Exactly. COVID happened in March unprecedented. We weren't expecting it. A lot of people lost their jobs. People got pay cuts and all of that. If you didn't have emergency funding, how would you feed your family? Mm -hmm. Right? So we always say that, look, even if it's just three months of how much, you know, you earn just a runway to say, if I lose my job or something or an emergency, my wall falls in or something, mm -hmm. I have this as a safety net. So that will be in a savings account somewhere. It has to be accessible. It has to be liquid. So that's not money you go and use to invest in real estate, for example. Mm. It's emergency. You should have access to it, right? Mm. And then you have an investment account. And you don't just invest because, oh, I want to buy shares. Oh, exactly. everybody is saying Dangote is the one, you know. No. What are your financial goals? Mm. So I'll give you an example. Hypothetically, right, EC is 30 years old. She's not married. She doesn't have children. I'm 35. I have two children, aged 10 and five. We're good friends. We earn exactly the same amount, 500K. Mm -hmm. EC is only 30. She doesn't have children yet. She can save half of that money. What She's not paying says? school fees. Do you see? Mm. She can put it in the equity market. Equity market shares that you bought, right? It's a long-term thing. Don't get me wrong. You can put money in the equity market today. And with equity, with shares, there's no maturity. So it's not like you're putting money today and it's a one-year investment. Mm. It's ownership stake in that business, mm. right? So you're making money from that company being a growing concern, that company doing well, their fundamentals, you know, their profit, yeah. and they're paying dividends and all of that, mm -hmm. right? Until you sell it or the company goes down, you know, there's no maturity. So if the company, if COVID happens or there's a recession or a credit crunch and the company goes down, you still have time. You're 30. You probably mm -hmm. work for longer than I'm you working. Will. You can wait it out. It's a waiting game, right? But I have two children. I'm 35. I'm paying school fees every... So I can't afford to take all of that money and put in the equity market. Absolutely. I have to take a different Percentage, approach. Yeah. Asset allocation. I can buy small treasury bills because you know what? Rent is due in six months. Mm. You know what? I have school fees. You don't have school fees, right? Mm -hmm. So when it comes to this planning, and that's what I was saying at the beginning about festivities, right? You start budgeting from January. So even in the but, way you are allocating mm. to the different accounts, yeah. in the way that you're saying, okay, dirty December is coming. I'm going to be putting 50K mm. aside, mm -hmm. right? She's living in her own house. She's not paying rent. She can put 50K aside. I'm not mm. going to compare myself to her because I'm paying rent. Mm. So can you see that my allocation is totally different? So my budget has to be customized Tailored. for me. Yeah. That's how it works. Mm -hmm. You've been saying 500K, 100K. <laughs> Some people don't have that amount of money in a month. Absolutely. So for the low-income earners, what would be your financial advice to them? Those are the people that actually need personal finance planning. It's not for the rich man. The rich mm -hmm. man is okay. He can get a tame and pay on the side to deal it. Mm -hmm. But for those people, those are the ones that actually need to sit down and say, okay, I'm going to cut my, you know, cloth. According to your... Cut my coat, according to my cloth. Yeah. Do you see? Mm -hmm. I'm going to live within my means. Mm -hmm. I'm going to spend less than I earn. Mm. So I was talking about my four C's earlier. My exactly. four C's of financial success. Mm -hmm. I say mm -hmm. that you have to be creative mm. in how you make money. This mm. one is not about, you know, I'm a CFA charter holder. I've mm. sold hair. 
Mm -hmm. I've sold bag. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you. Of income. <laughs> uh, you'll yes. be amazed, right? You can monetize all these other things you can do, you know, mm -hmm. teach people how to do. You have to be very creative. You, mm -hmm. you can't just sit down, you know, on just one stream of income. income. What if COVID happens? A mm -hmm. pandemic or you lose your job mm -hmm. or something. So you have to be creative about how you make money. You have to be conservative. You have to consistently spend less than you earn. Mm -hmm. If you're spending everything that you're earning, it's a big problem. If you're spending more than you earn, your ah, own is a different conversation. <laughs> There's a separate show for you, not even today. Do you see? You mm -hmm. have to be consistent in mm -hmm. how you save and invest. Saving and investing is how you grow your money. There's something mm -hmm. called um, the law of compounding. You know, and it simply says that you should grow your money at compounded interest over time. You know, so mm. don't spend your interest. Mm. If you invest 500, 100K, let mm. me use 50K or 100K, mm. right? And you get 2K income, interest on it. Mm. Invest the old 52 and keep compounding and compound. That's how your money grows, right? And it also happens on the debt side. Mm. When you take a loan, you know, and you're not paying, that your basic is It'd compounding be, yeah. as well. Exactly. So you have to be intentional about these things to say, this is how much I'm earning. I'm going to, you know, spend consistently lower than I earn so that I have some money to invest, you know, mm. that's your future. Mm -hmm. All of us have a finite number of years we're going to work, work for, totally. and then we retire. Mm -hmm. What's going to happen to our lifestyle? Mm. Mm. So Number the three, C. the third, you know, the you, third one, the Scott, no, third consistent, consistent yes. and be careful mm. who you listen to. Investment advice. Oh, today everybody's doing our Greek. That's where we're putting money. Mm. What are the fundamentals? They come to you, they promise you 50% return in mm. 60 days. What is the underlying? What are they putting that money in, Into. in this interest rate environment, to be earning that mm. back to financial education? Mm. Do you see? So nobody's asking you to go get a diploma mm. or go do accounting exam or something, but you need to invest, you mm. know, in to say, okay, this is my money. What am I doing with it? Where am I putting it into? And be very intentional. Have a budget. And know that with budgeting, look, if it's too restrictive, right, you won't follow it. The mm -hmm. idea is not perfection. It's just progress. progress. Stick as close to it as possible. Mm -hmm. And for, you know, festivities, again, look, it's been a tough year. Chop this life. You only <laughs> live once, you know. You're low. You know, all, the, all of that <laughs> things we say, you know, problem, no, they finish, uh -huh. all of that. Yeah. Just plan for it. It has to be within the budget. Okay. We're going to come to that, um, coming back again to festivity, uh -huh. because you see why we say we have guru in-house. <laughs> Everybody's already asking questions. Well, we'll take your questions, but we'll take a very short break. When we return, we'll continue the conversation. Please stay with us. We'll be right back.